Welcome to this new series of tutorials on matte painting basics. My name is Ed Lopez. We're going to be covering several different scenarios where matte painting is used, uh, simple tasks. Um, matte painting is not always about creating a fantastic uh, futuristic cityscapes for Star Wars or something like that. Matte painting is most of the time used for much more simpler scenes like this image here which is the uh, one we will be working with today many times you will receive from the studio something like this footage an image of the footage of the actual character in a blue screen or green screen which is very easy to extract or you will receive an image such as this which is much more complicated and it's the one we will be working on first let's crop it a bit to make it more cinematic format and then use the lasso tool to define roughly the shape we will be extracting everything that is left outside this selection is what we will be keeping and then let me tell you about this tool the refine edge tool available in Photoshop CS5 and with the option in this in this tool the edge detection option with the smart radius selected you can just go around like brushing over the edges of your selection and the algorithm for this tool tries to detect exactly where the edge is this uh, this tool is quite good quite good for some purposes when the images has quite a bit more of contrast and the objects are much more evident it does quite a fast job to to miss make a selection yet for the I uh, for our purposes uh, I still want I still like the the usual mask painting selections it is much more exact more much much more precise but this tool is quite good for for some purposes you can even see that you can work on black over white white over black you can extract the selection back and do it again and you even have some several different controls once you're done with that refining of the edge just hit OK let's invert the selection and create a new mask as you can see the edge detection tool missed in some areas left a little bit dirt around the edges so with this in mind let's let's use the traditional mask method so with painting with white on the mask puts back the content puts puts the content through and painting with black masks off whatever you paint so in this right now I, I am painting with white to recover exactly the edges so I can see them once again So I can see exactly where to start masking off this character. So now we will change to to black and start masking around all the border of a of our image of our character here, so we can extract it precisely. 
I use the standard Photoshop blocky brushes, just variations on the on the size, and go around all the edge of the of the content. Just be sure you have the opacity set to a hundred, so you are sure you're eliminating or masking off completely and not leaving some noise, some dirt behind and it's now it's just a process of going all, all around the edges finding exactly where the character is and masking off the rest Be sure not to leave all the any any of the dirt that the detection tool left. Just go around the, all of the edge of the of the character, as you can see here, eliminating all that is needed carefully and as you can see remember we are masking off with black which blocks the content and if you need it you can go back to white to put something back you have to if you need you you can do at any time and you always have the the mask present you can go back to the mask and refine or modify in any in any, in any moment if it's needed you just have to have a, a bit of attention to all the details that are part of the background like here and even using a one pixel brush to go into those tight places I'm speeding it up a little bit here so so we can go fast through all this but you can see the the whole process still it's just a matter of having patience and going all around the the edges and I presented to you the the tool, the edge detection tool, because it's a nice tool and it's present on Photoshop CS5, but still, for this kind of work, there's no replacement for a little bit of patience and attention to the detail. So now we have almost all our, of our character extracted. We're going to fill now the, the back in a new layer with a blue screen so we can see all the dirt left behind the, by the edge detection system. But still, this is a, a good way of finding out exactly where the, the edges are and refining if needed. It's much easier to see this way than in a checkered background I'm just making sure right here that there's no dirt or blur the details left by the edge detection tool and right now I'm gonna do a quick selection with the lasso tool once again so I can eliminate quickly deleting whatever we are sure we are, we are not going to need and in the same way making sure that in all these areas there is no, no dirt left. So now going back to the edge, we are now going to work on the, on the rocks. We are not going to worry about this, this grass here. If needed we can paint it back later. 
so we're just gonna go around the the edge of the rock here exactly the same way as as we did with the character making sure we get all the all the edges cleared removing all this all this messy dirt left behind by the detection tool and just going around the the whole edge nice and precise now just checking inside because the same way that that the edge detection tool is spilled outside it can spill inside so just making sure everything is there now I'm gonna add a couple of adjustment layers let's start with the levels layer because uh, the the image uh, it's supposed to come from a from a studio so it will have a, a correct exposure and a correct levels adjustment and this stock is certainly does not have that now let's just go to this image copy and paste it into a new layer in the in our workplace right here so we can start introducing the the new background for our, our scene just start placing it I'm gonna move the the character here a little bit to the right it's much more pleasing composition start moving the the background in place we're gonna also scale it a little bit holding shift of course so the aspect radio is remains untouched and I'm just looking for a good place in the composition for it and maybe I need to scale it down a little bit so we can include more of this nice landscape and there that's about it now we also need the sky so I introduced this very nice stock of a sky also place it in place create a new mask and quickly mask the edge of the of the sky with the landscape so we can we can see where it is and in sub some sections of it, the left and right, we have to be more precise about this this mask. So with a sharper brush, the R, the same blocky brush we use at the beginning, we find the edge between the landscape and the sky because there are so some sections of the image that require this to be exact but still we go back to our soft brush and work around masking in masking out until we get a a nice merge between both the sky and the landscape right here on the right I went too far so we have to go back to the define brush and check that horizon that edge and there we go we have a sky and then a new background now I'm gonna add a curves layer affecting only the sky and the background this is going to serve to make it darker but since we don't need it we don't need this darkening effect in all the image again we're gonna go back to the mask and with black we mask it off where we don't need it right there in those those sunlit sections and we also don't need that darkening effect 
back here on the on the foreground so we we'll, we also eliminate that that darkening effect from it now we're going to add a levels layer to add a bit of what sh what could be atmospheric haze that is always present in distant landscapes just to increase the the appearance that the of distance between the, our character and the and the the for the further away landscape and now just looking for a bit of a better placement for both our background elements I'm thinking we can crop a little bit more to make it even more s more wide aspect radio and there we have it we have a replaced the background of our scene these are this is ready if the if the image of our character or, or the, the actor changes we have uh, all this adjustment layer just for the for the background so we can adjust it to pair it up with the with the changes in uh, in the character footage there is our image even if uh, some uh, radical changes are introduced to the to the original footage or the original image for the character we can still pair up those changes even if they introduce some dramatic warming filter effect more of a sunset like so we can go to our background layers and pair those up with the with the changes introduced in the in the original footage even if some dramatic darkening changes occur everything can be paired up correctly that's that's a bit too too dramatic too orange but still we have all the uh, all of our layers separate or character correctly extracted so that's it the, the work we have done enable us or the compositor to work on this image and adjust it to be animated easily and like let me show you let me show you right here this this is an animation of our file that can be easily done in 10 minutes just because we prepared all the layers correctly and extracted the background nicely so what we learned basic background change replacement blending sky replacement and masking and adjustment layers hope you like this tutorial hope you join me in the next one we will be dealing with scenes like this one interesting topics like asteroid impacts uh, destruction of buildings and bridges <laughs> so that's it for now I'm Ed Lopez thank you